Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Okay. All right. And Kona, everybody. Well, you kind of, you've kind of taken this one over. <sighs> oh, all right. Video back on. What is happening, people? It is Brian Alves from NeverSafe.com, and my lens is broken. So if suddenly the shutter closes, I apologize. Now, before we jump into the video, I do need to let you guys know that this one is sponsored by the Cove 2 commuter speaker. You guys have seen this a ton of times on my channel because I use it constantly, whether I am cooking in the shower, meditating, out by the campfire, whatever it is, if I'm listening to eBooks, podcasts, or music, uh, I'm always using this thing. It is a really, really great tool. And right now, Cove is offering a discount because of everything going on. So if you guys wanna save 67%, you can do so by clicking the link in the description box below. It is a great speaker that I do use all the time, guys. It has a seven hour battery life. It is water resistant. You can be about 30 feet away from the thing with whatever you are Bluetooth connected to it. It's plenty loud if you have found yourself kind of relegated to outside or in your garage due to the coronavirus shutting down your gym. But the best part about this thing is it actually splits in half. So either you have two speakers for two separate people or you can get kind of a surround sound type of effect. Like I said, guys, I use it all the time. If you guys are in the market for one for yourself or for someone else this holiday season, click the link below and save yourself some money. Back to the video. So what you guys are actually looking at here is my giant set for today. And on my lower body days, the giant set is always built around one big strength movement, which for today is going to be the axle deadlift. You guys look what's happening here. The very first movement in the giant set is the straight arm lap pull down that I'm performing with a band, obviously because I don't have a lap pull down. But the idea here is that I'm recruiting my lats and trying to get them kind of engaged the exact same way that they should be on the deadlift. When I'm trying to bend that bar across my shins, if it is not, then that bar has a tendency to float out in front of the middle of my foot, more towards my toes, or even further, at which time it gets exponentially heavier. So a lot of times on a tough deadlift day, I would like to do straight arm lat pull downs to engage my lats to help train them to kind of be ready to do that next movement. The second exercise in this giant set is going to be the box jump. And the whole idea here is to work my leg drive off of the floor. Since it's an axle, which I'm gonna talk more about in just a second, your leg drive is going to be extra important on this one. So I'm doing the box jump because much like in the deadlift, the second that the slack is out of the bar and the slack is out of your body, everything needs to explode at once. And I'm again, training my body to do that by using the box jump. The third exercise is the main strength set for the day, which is going to be the axle deadlift. And then after that is going to be hanging rainbows. Now, Guys, whenever I do a core exercise, especially on lower body days, I am bracing the exact same way that I would on my squat or my deadlift. I'm not sucking my belly button towards my spine or doing anything weird like that. I'm literally pushing my abs out, I'm bracing them down, I'm trying to get a big belly breath of air because again, I'm training my body on these secondary exercises on what I want it to do for that main movement. So if I can do a really good job on these little exercises that surround the axle deadlift, then hopefully, I'll be creating more of the correct muscles and doing the right things when it comes to the actual performance of that big exercise. All right, so why the axle deadlift? Everyone always wants to know about the axle. Why is it harder? A lot of people do not have access to this. So when you explain this, a lot of times people didn't realize how much harder an axle is than a standard barbell. First off, of course, it is fatter. It is a two inch diameter, which is closer to a soda can than it is a normal barbell. So it is much, much harder to hold on to. Secondly, it does not have rotating collars the way that a barbell does. When you lift weights, if those weights rotate, the collar will rotate, which means that you don't need to deal with it. When you're using an axle, it does not rotate. So if those weights start rolling, your grip needs to stop that bar and the momentum of it happening. Otherwise, it will literally roll right out of your hands. Another reason why it's extremely hard is that there is zero whip. If you're used to deadlifting with like a Texas deadlift bar and you're used to getting a couple inches of slack out of that bar prior to it actually leaving the ground, there is zero amount of that on axle. An axle is nothing more than a pipe. So if it bends, it stays bent. It's not, there is zero whip to it. So that means when you start driving off the floor, you better have everything that you're gonna have because there is no extra movement. 
you literally need to go 100% from the beginning. And as if that was not already bad enough, since it is that two inch diameter bar, you are already lifting from a deficit because it is lower than where a barbell normally would be. And also, it is further away from your body. And like we discussed earlier, the further that that bar gets away from the middle of your foot, out towards your toes or even further, it's going to get exponentially heavier. That's exactly why when you go to pick something heavy up, you don't do it with your arms straight. You pull it as close to your body as possible because that is where you have the most biomechanical support. And an axle will kind of slightly take that away from you. And finally, there is no knurling. So you're dealing with a smooth bar. It's not like a nice barbell that will bite into your hands for grip. Now, a lot of times people will see other individuals lifting with an axle and using straps. And they always wanna know what is the point of using straps when lifting with an axle. And the reason why is because in strongman events, a lot of times for an axle deadlift, you are allowed to use straps for a couple reasons. Number one, um, deadlifting an axle without straps tends to make you bend your arms when you start losing that grip and people break biceps very often. So they're trying to avoid that. And secondly, they want those weights to be heavy, right? And when you're talking about a grip event with something like an axle, it's not gonna get super, super heavy, and people at Strongman shows often want to see the athletes lift bigger numbers than they normally see people lifting in the gym, or it's some sort of apparatus that is heavier than a normal deadlift, and people would not be able to do it without the straps. So, in a lot of times where you see someone doing the deadlift with the axle, maybe they're just still trying to get the other benefits of how the axle makes the deadlift harder, but most likely they're just practicing for a Strongman contest, or, they're lifting with their ego. Anyway, but that, my friends, is a short answer why an axle is so much harder than a barbell. All right, so 570 on the axle is not terribly bad. It, I was hoping 585, to be completely honest with you. However, uh, the way this stupid lefty seems to be working today, I was actually happy that I was able to rally and uh, kind of come back on that 570, because the 550, I was losing it the entire time. Like, it just did not want to close. Now, um, I don't know why my grip's a little off today. It could be because it's cold, it could be because it's a big stupid axle, but 570's not bad and I will take it. The good news is that the deadlift feels like a joke. The deadlift is no problem whatsoever. Uh, I easily, I don't know where I'm at a deadlift, but definitely more than 570. So um, the biggest problem, stupid lefty. We'll see. Now as far as my volume slash conditioning goes, the plan is to drop back to 405 and hit doubles or triples at top of a minute for 10 minutes while also hitting three sandbag over shoulder. So the idea is that I'm going to be using my hips very explosively while still working this stupid grip and uh, getting more deadlifts in, of course. And so that is just the small stuff that is needed, things like glute ham raises as well as T-bar row. The T-bar row on the end of deadlift days, something I really like to do, is load up with something relatively light and then do super high reps, like sets of 20, sets of 30, um, and then throw something in between, like something like the glute ham raise, that takes a little bit more time so you get a little bit of rest. However, you're getting an extreme burn to your back and your upper back, being stronger is always gonna help your deadlift as well as literally every single other lift that you have. So guys, I thank you so much for joining me here on my training day. I really, really do appreciate all the support, absolutely everything you guys are doing. I hope you guys had an awesome holiday. I hope everything is just going amazing. If you guys are interested in that speaker, make sure you click and the link in the description box down below. I will catch you guys later in the week. Until I do go out to something amazing, realize keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other, please. Time to be nice to each other. I'll see you then.